the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, Distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. Victor Rizel of the New York Mirror and Mr. Henry Hazlitt, editor of the Freeman and contributing editor of Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Albert N. Carville, Governor of Delaware. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Well, Governor Carville, I think you were only the second Democrat to be elected governor of Delaware in the last 56 years. I'd like to know what you think was the main factor in that remarkable victory. Mr. Hazlitt, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I might say that... Uh, Probably one of the main factors in my election in Delaware in 1948 was the fact that uh, our state Democratic Party had a strong, progressive platform in education and uh, uh, improving the facilities of our state and uh, perhaps in uh, eliminating or offering to eliminate a uh, a very vicious anti-labor law. Well, didn't you stress the corruption issue uh, at that time and uh, what the uh, state of that issue now? Why, that's a good question, sir. We did uh, stress the, uh, the election law issue, which had to do with the uh, business of voting dead people and uh, also perhaps um, uh, the, uh, the illegal use of ballots. Uh, you know, in Delaware, we have um, five uh, official ballots issued for every person who is registered. And actually, you can take these ballots, uh, you can receive them outside of the voting place and go right in the voting place and, and vote an official ballot. And uh, that, we thought, was wrong. It uh, encouraged corruption, and we've been fighting strongly to have that law repealed for, for several years. Well, in view of the record of the Truman administration, what do you think the effect of the corruption issue is going to be nationally in the coming elections? Well, personally, uh, I think the, the problems facing us today are perhaps somewhat different than they were in Delaware. Uh, actually, we run into some, some dishonesty in government. And uh, I feel that... Uh, inasmuch as both parties encompass all of the people of the United States, we're bound to have dishonest people in both parties. And uh, actually, uh, uh, I realize that uh, in the best banks in the uni United States, we have people who are uh, no doubt dishonest, we have embezzlement, and there's many times very little said about that. And I don't minimize the corruption. I think that uh, when people are dishonest, they should be cleared out of, the, out of government and properly punished. Well, Governor, uh, you, uh, your party is led by uh, President Truman. Uh, he's the chief officer. Uh, it was under him that the corruption spread. Uh, where do you start with the elimination of those responsible for this vast corruption? Uh, my feeling is that you start wherever the corruption exists and uh, you clean it up wherever you find it. I feel that President Truman will do that. How much of the responsibility for this do you place on the standard bearer of your party? It was his executives who permitted this corruption. Well, of course, that, uh, that is a, a matter of, uh, of uh, opinion to some extent, because uh, the president um, has under him uh, over two and a half million civil employees, aside from the armed forces. 
and uh, uh, you could say that uh, under the president of some great national bank that uh, uh, there was certain dishonesty that occurred, and uh, naturally it's cleared up just as soon as it occurs, and sometimes it goes on for years. I've known of cases in our own state where embezzlement lasted for perhaps, uh, oh, 10 or 12 years before it was ever uncovered. Well, you would remove those responsible for this embezzlement, yet the president hasn't removed the Attorney General, McGrath, or any of the others. Well, I would remove those responsible for corruption and for dishonesty if I was satisfied that uh, they were the ones uh, who were responsible and who did cause it. But not for incompetence in permitting this to go on? Uh, as far as incompetence is concerned, uh, uh, that's uh, th that, that's a hard uh, thing to measure, as I see it. Uh, uh, I go back to the president of the bank again. He you have dishonest people in that bank, and, they, and it goes on for 10 or 12 years, and, and uh, he has auditors coming in and out, and these people are smart enough to keep that covered up. Governor Carvel, uh, today, <laughs> over the uh, international wire, the ticker, um, General Eisenhower said he would accept the Republican draft. In effect, I read a statement. Uh, do you think if he got the nomination, he could beat President Truman? If you think so, are you eager as a highly placed Democrat to get another candidate who could stand up more strongly against the general? Uh, that, that's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's very timely at I this think point. So. Uh, but uh, I like uh, Eisenhower. I think very highly of him. And I... I uh, was one who said that if he was willing to run on the Democratic ticket, I would support him. But I will not support him on the Republican ticket. And uh, I believe if President Truman runs against him, I will support Truman. And I believe that on the basis of the fine, progressive uh, administration Truman has brought to the nation, the uh, excellent condition of the people of today, not only their financial condition, but the progress they've made, the, the general welfare, the progress they've made in general welfare. I, I really believe that uh, Mr. Truman will be elected if he desires to run. Well, do you think Mr. Truman will be a candidate to succeed himself? Well, uh, he has never told me. Uh, I have told him that I would like to see him run, and uh, I will staunchly support him if he does so. Well, do you think he'll really get very much support uh, in view of, uh, let's say, the, not only the corruption issue, but the third term issue and any number of other issues that might be raised? Well, I, I think we've pretty well handled that <laughs> yes. corruption issue, but, but uh, as far as the third term issue, I think uh, there's no law against it now. And uh, well, it I remember apply, another president who... It doesn't apply who, to him, but it applies to everybody else. Yes, but I remember another president who pretty well demonstrated that... Uh, uh, success could be had on the third term. Well, that was before they passed the third term amendment. That's true. And, uh, uh, and of course, you realize this. Uh, at that time, uh, they had not passed the third term amendment, but it was generally considered as unwritten law that no president well, would run for a third term. You, you and think I think Franklin you, Roosevelt pretty well... You think uh, written law would be ignored just as much as unwritten law has been? Well, of course, it, uh, of course, uh, it doesn't apply specifically to Mr. Truman, the only person it doesn't apply to. I that's agree correct. On and, that. and then as much well, as that was uh, only the unwritten law was very strong at that time. And uh, I, I feel that uh, the present written law, although it doesn't apply to Mr. Truman, will be no stronger. Well, uh, if the president doesn't stand for re-election, there seems to be a general feeling that he might not, uh, having little or nothing to do with the issue of corruption much. Uh, do you think, Governor, that uh, Kefauver would make a good candidate, or who do you think should stand in the place of Mr. Truman? Well, personally, um, if uh, the president doesn't choose to run, of course I'd like to point one thing out, and that is that the third term uh, uh, does not necessarily apply to him. He's actually only been elected for one term, although he served the uh, three and uh, three-quarter years of the other term. But uh, I don't know Kefauver. I've never met him personally. Uh, I think the nation owes Kefauver a great debt for his strong leadership and helping to clear up some of the conditions which were existing. And uh, for my part, uh, I might point out that he is a Democrat, and, and uh, we Democrats have tried to uh, clear up, clean up the House uh, when we found it was necessary to do so. But I, I don't <coughs> know Kefauver. I do know Gordon Browning, who just recently announced uh, 
and himself as a candidate, and he's from Tennessee, as you recall, and a very distinguished uh, naval uh, uh, statesman of that uh, area. Uh, I don't predict that uh, he would get the nomination at all. Uh, that, that's a pretty wide open proposition. Well, Governor, I'd like to ask you as a final question what you think the uh, best achievement has been of your administration as Governor of Delaware. Well, I might say that uh, the most successful achievement uh, of our administration has been our education program. Uh, we have uh, really done a fine job, I think, in Delaware in taking care of uh, our responsibilities to the future citizens of our state and nation. Uh, during the last three years, we have increased teacher salaries by 40%, and Delaware has the highest uh, state-supported teacher salary schedule in the nation today. In addition to that, we have built uh, uh, a great many school buildings. I think we have increased uh, our school building uh, capacity by almost 50 percent. We've spent, right. and we'll spend about 35 million dollars on that. And uh, with a little state the size of Delaware, uh, 35 million dollars right. to 325 people would mean a, mi a billion. Governor, I'm awfully sorry. Thousand. I got you into this right yeah. at this moment, but I'm sorry our time is up. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. Victor Rizel and Mr. Henry Hazlitt. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Albert N. Garvel, the Governor of Delaware. On February 15th at the Bislett Stadium in Oslo, Norway, as the Olympic flag is raised, King Hawken will officially open the Winter Games of the 1952 Olympics. The exclusive official watch for these Winter Olympics will be Longines, the world's most honored watch. And the watches employed will be the world-famous Longines Olympic timers, which register to a tenth or a fifth of a second, and which are of traditional Longines split-second accuracy. Supplementing these Longines watches will be new timing devices recently developed in the Longines Research Laboratory and made in the Longines factory devices which will register the time to one hundredth of a second and with the greatest accuracy ever attained. And may I repeat that all Longines watches and timing equipment which will be used during the 1952 Winter Olympics are Longines conceived, Longines designed, and Longines made. A fact not true of many timepieces in this world of today. Here in the Winter Olympics is another honor for the world's most honored watch, Longines the only watch ever to win 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, and highest honors for accuracy from national observatories. And the experience gained in creating watches of high precision for scientific purposes contributes to the perfection of all Longines watches. And that is why throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is Frank Knight speaking. This is the CBS Television Network.